Welcome to day four, Christmas card making by Teresa Welch, our week of webisodes. And today we're getting into the Color Me card toppers with a decidedly Christmas flair. We're, this is demo day for right. us. We're going to show you lots of ways to color those Color Me card toppers. Right. It's actually demo day for Gail. <laughs> and uh, we'll show you lots of ways that Teresa shares with us how to make these wonderful pieces. Come, Come play, play with, with us. us. Here are the three new sets, and we have... We have Christmas Greetings, Christmas Postcards, and Doily, and they all have that raised embossed Color Me finish on yeah. them. Yeah, in fact, let's get into this one. This is the uh, Christmas Greetings, and just like you said, you want to feel? They're raised. <laughs> Can you feel? <laughs> so that you know that you're going to do color work in between all of that raised area, or you could leave it like this and just stamp on it. Yeah, actually you could, couldn't you? Sure. Um, it is raised, and that raised area, this time it's in black, which we call ebony, and that's going to resist the color. The paper, of course, is going to absorb the color. Right. So you, so get... you can add your color yeah. on there, wipe off on the raised areas, and you have a beautiful work of art ready now, to go. Now each package has has eight sheets and you're going to get two of each of the designs so that's one oh, here is a second love that, Isn't that one. gorgeous yes. is that your favorite yes <laughs> and here is a third one jingle bells now the last two sheets are going to be our greetings because we want to complete our card so the greetings are done as you see again in the ebony color me uh, embossed right. part so you can treat them just the same as you treated the other exactly and then you get some extra art so that will come in handy and then you get another sheet that has everything except these are blank so that you can stamp computer journal handwrite any message that you right. want and everything is designed to coordinate so this is what's inside the package on the back of the package we always give you one idea now it's going to be fun to see what Teresa did right. so we're going to start with this package and here is Teresa's first card and isn't this a beauty? It is beautiful. It's got that Color Me card topper with uh, done with Spectrum Noir pens. Right. And what Teresa has done is so effectively used her greeting over in this area. Now, in this case, we'll back up just a smidge, and you can see that she cut out this part, her card topper, um, when rather when she glued it onto her card, she cut away this piece. So she's got a cutaway card and then just lined the inside of her card. So beautiful look. What I love that Teresa does so effectively is she doesn't cover the card with everything. Right. She leaves some very significant white spaces which really just pops the color. Right. So, so that on the edge you can see that blue but that it contrasts with the white very well. Right. So you're going to do a little demo here? I've got a craft sheet because whenever you're using Spectrum Noir, it can bleed through. You don't want that getting on your surface. Back most anything you don't want. <laughs> you want to use a craft sheet. So Teresa used several different sets, blues, greens, and I believe yellows. And red. And red. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to show you is how she did one of the leaves. So we're going to get in kind of tight on one of the leaves there. And I have from the green set a DG2 and a DG4. And those are all called out in the instructions. I'm going to use the fine end and I'm going to start with the lighter color and color in one of the leaves. So if I start right here. And it's, if you get your glasses. Oh, that would have been smooth. Nobody would have. Oh, known. except I blew your cover, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to color in one of the leaves here all the way through and the thing about alcohol pens, you don't want to rub them a lot on the raised embossed portion because it will pick up that black and put it into your image. Let's get coloring. an even closer, John. There we go. There we are. Good. So you're just covering that whole leaf with right. that lighter green. Right. I'll, I can go back and forth in between, but when I get close to that black, I just kind of dab around it so okay. that it doesn't pick up into my drawing. Okay. Although it's, it's not bad. It's easy. So there we go in the lighter green, and then you're going to take the darker green, which in this case is DG4 out of the green set, and just go around the, the image, just around 
the veins of the holly. Okay, and just a little heads up, um, beginning the middle of September, the Spectrum Nor pens are being redone. They are going to have a kind of a hexagon shape and uh, they're going to be an even smoother blending oh. pen. So, and what I what I'm doing right now is I'm going back with the lighter oh. one. I'm sort of blending it in a little bit more with the darker one, just around the edges. And that There's blending, no stark lines. Okay, yeah. is what's wow. It's just amazing to me how that little bit just makes such a huge difference. Sure. So here's what Teresa did. And you can see she did that same blending on the green leaves, also in the blue ornaments. But the red and the yellow <clears throat> are just the straight color, so that works so well. I love just the playful colorness. Right, the blue is striking. It almost looks like it a suede. It does, doesn't it? On the inside, she has uh, used just two colors on her greeting and wrapped it with a ribbon and just finished off her card. So, okay, Spectrum Noir, we'll cross that off. Now we're going into her next card. Where we're using watercolor pencils. Ah. We've been using these a lot lately. The, the sets are so fun to play with that you can just add a little water and, and blend, them into, um, blend them into each other really easily. So a little softer color, it feels like sure. to me, than, rather than the Spectrum I, Noir. I thought it was chalk when I saw it. <laughs> but it's, uh, and again, yeah. not coloring everything, which is nice. And isn't this great how she has used those tags and labels to bring it into the open area? And I love her treatment right. with ribbon here. And she just used a little bit of it, just a little detailing yeah. around the edges, left that white in the center, so it's very striking. Now let me open up the inside, and wow, how fun. This is using the new Merry Christmas cutting die. Which looks really strange in the packaging. It does. Well, it has the <laughs> foam. Well, first of all, it's backwards. But it also has the foam to make it easy release, so that's very nice. And these are quite significant size. You can right. see that this card is five inches uh, wide. And, and it spans the entire card. It does. But that font is really playful. There's a lot of scroll work. And what Teresa has done is cut out some of the <laughs> extra artwork and placed it right in. She just entwined it within ah. the die cut. And then also the cutting die was done on the green pattern paper and then on black. So it's offset, offset. to have a shadow. Right. So very nice. Very okay, nice let's get into our water coloring. Okay, so here's that Color Me card topper. I've got a red pen, uh, pencil, excuse me, from the red pencil set, and I have a water brush here. So I'm going to start just on the this candy cane, and you can, you know, you can color right over. I'm going to scoot you over a little bit. There you, you go. You can color right over the embossed area because it's not really going to affect it. So color right over the lines just as long as you stay on the candy cane itself. So you're starting by coloring in with the pencil. Okay, just pretty solidly. Is pretty, that pretty solidly, okay. yeah. If you want it a little darker, look, if I press really, ah, if I really okay. press, you can make it a lot darker. So you can do that. You, it's your choice on how you want to do You can go over it twice. Okay, once I've done some of it, I'm going to show you with the water brush, which this picks up water and holds it in there. It just makes it so you don't have to dip your brush a lot. But then, you could use a paintbrush. Well, sure. Sure, okay. Paintbrush, that, that's what it is on the end, the paintbrush. <laughs> and then you just swipe it over like so. And that smooths those lines. Correct. Oh, yeah. It blends it together. If you had two colors, it would blend it together you know, really easily. You know, I have to say, I would never have tried watercolor pencils because it just seems like you've got to be an artist to do that. No, very so. simple. I'm going to I'm gonna dab it a little bit so that it's not on the... Um, oh, on the black. On the yeah. Black now, yeah. just to look oh, at nice. the different... So you can get very dark colors as well as the lighter. So sure. that's nice. And even after you use the water on there, if you want to, you go back oh. onto there with the pencil, and when the water's on there, it makes it even darker. Okay, oh, so you can really nice. adjust that. Sure. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So that's what Teresa has done on this entire card. And I'm also pleased with how quick that was. Oh, yeah, that it's was easy. It's sort of no big deal. I didn't have to worry about <laughs> not touching the black. Yeah. So well, and also the black kind of holds it in. Uh -huh. So that's nice. And so we saw the inside. So the large ribbon done. across the I do top. Too. And that uh, top and that's foam taped on there so that it leaves a little shadow behind oh, the tech. That's one of my favorite techniques. That's personally. nice. Okay. Now, here is another. Now, with this card topper, Teresa removed the center area. So 
um, that's creating a window for us. Oh. And you have that? I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> Slight change over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you take that card topper and you're going to want to use a craft knife to cut out the center, place it on a cutting mat, and you trace around just inside that black line and then when with you your pop pen. it up with your pen, mm -hmm. yeah, your pen knife, and uh, take it out like so. Now what Teresa says is that she thinks it's easier for her to do this first and then to place it, um, I'm just going to put it on the back of this card, to place it on her front of her card and use this to create an opening. So what she did and what we recommend is that you go like that and then turn it over and line it up. Line and, it up with where you just did it and use. Right. And you'll be able to complete that oval pretty easily. So then, uh, just ignore this. That's her indicator of what card this is. Um, you'll have an oval that you can cut out of your card front, and then you can place your card topper on it after you have colored it in. Right. So just a little trick there. So you What's have this. About the, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> The, the other thing that she did with the card topper is that she colored it in with a Distress Ink. Right. So we want to bring that over. So I've we'll got see that it. here. And this is Squeezed Lemonade. It's one of our newer Distress Inks that we carry. And she takes that with her craft sheet and she just puts some of it right on the craft sheet. Don't know if you can see it's right there. Yeah. And then she spritzes it with a little bit of water, just like one spritz. Oh, I have to chew the come out. <laughs> And then you use a paintbrush to pick that up. So there it is on the paintbrush. Need to it over a little bit more there. And you're just going start into the jingle. In. Yeah, with just start painting in the letters. Pick okay. up a little bit more. If you feel it needs to be watered down a little more, you can just add a little water to it or a little more ink, whatever right. you think. But that it makes it. It's really a bright look. Okay. And that's really. And simple. again, the color me is is creating a channel to hold that. So it makes it even easier, and just like so. Wow. Like so. Very easy. Okay. It's almost fluorescent. It is, and it works beautifully here. And again, with that center evacuated, uh, Teresa has uh, lined the back of her card and foam taped her uh, painted um, <laughs> a message on the inside. So it's just, it's really all complete all by itself. Right, that's a fun one to do. It really is. Very, very striking. Now that finishes that first set of Christmas greetings. So now we're going to go into our postcard set. And the postcard set looks like this. Yes. And let me show you each of those pieces. So we've got a Santa Claus Express post, as you might know. And just in case you didn't know Santa's address, it is right here for all the world to see. 124 Reindeer Drive, North Pole 99705. I have no idea how accurate that is, but uh, play along with me. Then we also have this very vintage looking postcard. Which is great. You've got uh, this big open area so you can do things in the center of that. Yeah, kind of like you just did. And then we have a very merry Christmas again. Just a beautiful and striking look to each of each of the ones I just showed you. Now here are the greetings and you see that you're going to get some extra holly leaves. And Which you can actually use to foam tape on top of other images absolutely. where you see the holly. And there they are blank. And then again, hot off the press, you're going to get an idea on the back of the package. But I am anxious to see what our Miss Teresa has done. And here is her there first is. card. She used gelatos on this card. She did. Now the other thing that she did is right here, we'll get in close, is that she has painted that one of, let's see, one of the extra holly pieces from the message board sheet and foam taped that on top and it just made an even richer uh, right. little grouping it's right a there. Little 3D look. It makes it right. look like there's more holly. And tis the season she has brought in and again, that was on this sheet, so you can see there it is. Mm -hmm. Doesn't, you know, let's face it, doesn't look like much there, right. but wow, look what she <laughs> has striking. made. Come peeking out from underneath that mm -hmm. holly piece that she put on there. I also love the little 
Just a tiny little bit of ribbon and a pearl right there. Very right nice. There. And we know if you don't have pearls the right color, you can use the Spectrum Nor pens color and color them, them. Any color you like. So there's the Santa Claus Express post and just a little bit of coloring. On the inside, that other holly, more of the pearls and ribbon, and Merry Christmas and just to a you. little bit of work to that label yeah. makes it so striking. Okay, so gelato us. <laughs> oh, okay. I, okay, I'm not quite sure. This was on one of the cards, and now I'm... Oh, Don't, worry okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So somehow I missed one. But... Uh, the and technique's the same. The technique that she used in one of these was with gelatos. And you'll see around the edge that she used gelatos. I, you know, it's not. Are you worried? Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to you change something? No, I just... Okay. We... Oh... Should I wait? <laughs> no, let's show okay, this. Okay, show strike it. what I just said, but we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. So this is the gelatos. That is the okay. gelatos with the Christmas greetings right. that we were okay. messing up somehow. And the gelatos were used all okay. over here, and they were blended with a baby wipe, and that's what I was going to show you okay. this one. You know, I don't think I would have thought to make this that bright yellow. And yet, that is so striking. It is, and there's almost a, like a little bit of red just to sit down oh, at the bottom, sort of highlights okay. a little bit. So that's beautiful. And the Christmas being a little more subdued red, it's matching this um, cardstock and a ribbon and a red blossom. And then on the inside, and that's what you were going to demonstrate, right. which you will now, yeah. uh, the delivering Christmas wishes and unwrap the magic. Both of these are variegated. So uh, show us gelatos. This is what, from the red set mm -hmm. and from the yellow set, I have red cherry here. And I'm gonna start by going around the outside edge and I'm just gonna go right over the embossing and everything. And it's sort of like coloring with, um, with crayons a little bit. You're going to get a lot on there because that's going to be moved around in a little bit. You want to get it in those areas. And this is kind of like using the watercolor pencils in that you're not getting every bit of it colored. Right. Um, so it, at first it might feel kind of funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But if you get it around the edges, you don't have to worry about that, that white poking through because that'll be taken care of. Okay. And then you put the yellow in the center. Ah. Like so. Right. And once you have it pretty much where you want it. And I, I remember on hers there was some orange, so that must be when you start the blending. And it's going to blend together. So I've got a thing of baby wipes. I'm going to grab one. And we have to tell you something about baby wipes. We ended up with some baby wipes that were kind of dry, and they didn't really do a good job didn't on the gelatos. Didn't do what we wanted it to do. So, so make sure that yours aren't real, real dry. And or, once you start going, or maybe it doesn't dried take out. much. I'm going to start ah. on the edge. And it's sort of fast. Work my way in. It's really fast. I might even isn't it? change and get another area so that I don't get the red all over everything. But you're you're just wow. blending it up into everywhere else. It's almost like it melts it. Yeah. Right. Well, I suppose the alcohol in it probably does that. Ah. There's alcohol in baby wipes. Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time since I <laughs> used baby wipes. <laughs> I'm gonna get a nice clean area. Let's see to do right in the center because I don't oh, want that red okay. all over. Ah. And just sort of until it goes out to the edges. Okay. Yeah, Very nice. Okay. okay, so here's what Teresa did. So good, good demoing there. Thank you. And then also she used it, the green and yellow, it looks like, on um, this little one. So the gelato. So the same thing, it would be putting a smear of yellow and doing the gelatos over it, bringing some red into it. Same right. thing on the leaves, that little bit of yellow is creeping into the green leaves. It works beautifully. So this is gelatos. I went back to our notes. This is the <laughs> Spectrum Nor pens. So um, right. that's just a really good, and we've already demoed that, so we don't need to. But again, for you to see how Teresa used those very remarkable pens. Okay. Now we're going to go into the last postcard. And in this case, now we did talk about that oval, so it could have been cut away. But this time, Teresa simply used it as a really nice uh, space frame, yeah, to put her to message put her on. on. And so it was matted. She's matted it a couple of times on white and she then has. green to um, set it off. You know, I could see that green being um, swayed really easily. I too. could too. That would be beautiful. Now, the other thing that Teresa has on this card is if I can wiggle this for you, 
<clears throat> Hopefully you can see that there are some um, smooch was used on this, wasn't right. it? It gives just a bit of the glittery so, shine. Right, it was the smooch glitz. It was. So it's a, it's a clear base and then it just has the glitter in it, this, the very super fine glitter, so it just has right. that just light touch. In this shimmer. case, it's the uh, frost, I think. Right. Um, and that sounds it's, right. it just gives that silver look, so just that's... a little added touch. Yeah, and I'm... Sorry if you can't see it terribly. You're I'm doing. So hard. I'm wiggling my little heart you know, out here. I can see the shine of the embossing. <laughs> if that helps, it's very shiny. <laughs> so she's added that to this postcard. The design of the postcard itself is, is just so beautiful. It stands alone, and that's our design department. So. And I think it's kind of interesting that this is not specifically in the center. It's a little bit toward the holly leaves over on the left, right. and on the inside, she's done a red statement and layered um, two of the greetings, one on top of the other, those extra leaves are going there. I have to tell you that sitting here in person, I can see that shine just from any direction I'm looking. So it really doesn't Thank make an you. effect because it's so hard to see on camera. Yeah, it's really, really there. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa's never lied to us. A beautiful postcard. Now we're going to go into our last set. Now you might think, you know, what are you doing with doilies? This isn't Christmas. Well, you just wait. <laughs> Christmas lace. Uh, yes. Now here we have this overall great big one and this that you can use vertically or horizontally, two sheets. And here is another with that um, oval in the center. And then our artwork is a thank you just because this is why it's so handy to have these because you can make this a Christmas greeting, right. um, sympathy, anything that you want. Easter, any holiday, right. anything. <laughs> Here's one idea on the back of the package, but look what Teresa has done, and I am amazed by this one. This is such a rich look. I mean, it all is. that white you were seeing, and now it's transferred <laughs> into this, this, uh, these rich tones. And this was done with cho uh, chalking. Blue right. Chalking. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> and she has used the Christmas cheer um, stamp set. Here you can see um, the magic of Christmas never ends. Its greatest gifts are family and friends. And she has embossed that on a patterned paper and then matted it for this effect. You can still see all of this behind, and she's right. offset it, which I think is a great look. Okay, look at this now. Look at that um, yellow or kind of gold swirls. Okay. Where did she get Where that? Did she, what is that from? It is from <laughs> Lacy Paper Pack. I would never have even thought of using this, but there are the swirls in this, mm -hmm. and she has positioned um, this piece of paper and um, uh, did her heat embossed stamping, and then went back and did the right. inking. It's kind of dark. You might not think of putting a stamp right. on there like you couldn't see it. But right. Okay, it sort of makes you look, but it's just beautiful. I think it's rather amazing. <laughs> it is. I love the, the gumdrop button up here with mm -hmm. her little uh, ribbon technique. And right. she's done some painting with the chalk ink. Now, with this particular one, Teresa cut out um, just outside the uh, lace. So, no, actually, she cut off these little spikes. So let's get in close to right. see that. Because, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and cut around each one of <laughs> no, those. No, we're not. So that's easy to cut off if you yeah, want so to Yeah, so she just look. cut it off. Or you could have cut along the outside of it, leaving a white border that you could have colored in. Mm -hmm. Teresa elected to just snip those off. But it created a wonderful framework for her stamping. And you're going to show how she did the uh, inking, huh? Yes, I am. Okay. So I've got my craft sheet, I've got the card topper. This is the Red Barn chalk ink, right. fluid chalk ink. A favorite of ours. So you start by pressing that onto your craft sheet. Now one thing I want to say about the chalk um, is that it is a blend of uh, different kinds of inks. So it has the properties of a distress ink in that you can do what you're about to do, right. yet it also um, works well on all kinds of surfaces. I'm so. sure I have a lot of it on there. Okay. And I'm going to one little spritz to make it into a paint, and you can sort of see it, it picks it up right away. There you go, and you've got paint. Okay. 
and you can start painting. I uh, This brush will work fine. A little fine tip brush would work pretty good, too. And I'm going to start right on the little scalloped area. Except that's not where the camera is. Okay. <laughs> So pick it up and just start painting along, right. and you can you don't have to avoid the black. You can just go right over those black embossed areas. Right. Very simple. Just that easily. Yep. Now she's done that color there. She's also done a little bit into those um, teardrops right. along the edge. I'll just a little right. on there. And then she, of course, did her whole paper after she had done her heat embossing, same way, just painting it in, and then switched over to a blue for the inner area. In that, and used that same process, just a little exactly. bit of water added onto there. And then on the inside of her card, she has used, you could really see the lacy paper pack, and then she has stamped the Merry Christmas, which you have previously stated is your favorite of the Christmas yeah. cheer stamp set. <laughs> so here is one of the doily turned into a Christmas card. Here is another that Teresa brilliantly, of course, turned into another Christmas card. And this looks like this to begin with, but Teresa, Teresa did more of her creative snipping <laughs> and went around the edge to create this oval all by itself. And in this particular case, she has colored um, the white wildflowers uh, with the same process that she used with here. The distress ink, and she wanted to mention that when you when you're coloring these, you can press the distress ink pad oh. directly onto the blooms, the paper flowers, the yeah, paper flowers. But she said that if you do it too much, it'll kind of flatten out the little raised areas. So she used a sponge oh. mostly. Okay, so that's nice. As we back up just for a second, I want to point out that Teresa has. This whole doily is in one color, and the same color she has used on her greeting and on her flowers. So it's very monochromatic, but where it really works is the leaves that she's done in green, the the matting the in matting, green, right. and then the pattern paper. It breaks it up a little. And the right. leaves, she actually cut the leaves from, from, the, from one of the flowers. Right. She just used the flowers to cut a leaf shape. Right, so all of that. So how did she do I'd this, like to show you how this she bit did of that. magic? So here we have this shape here, the card topper. We have two distress inks. We have festive berries and barn doors. So they're very similar colors. Mm -hmm. And Teresa used the ink um, applicator. Ink applicator. Mm -hmm. And this is with the foam. Right. Um, foam and the removable, you can remove right. them for different colors. I'm going to use the stylus with the sponge tips on the end. Okay. And so I've got the two different colors, opening them up. And I'm going to start with one color, like so. Okay. And just start going around like so, applying a little bit there. Then I'm going to switch to the other color. And just next to it, and it just sort of makes a model effect with the two different oh, colors, okay. and you just sort of keep. I could probably use this one first, go over a few different mm -hmm. areas, and you can just keep adding it and making it a little darker, and then um, adding. The but it's other nice color. with those that double tip. Isn't it is. It? I see what was, you mean. I immediately I was like, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do this. <laughs> yeah. So. You just, you've got options. So they are close in color, but together they are making this wonderful brick color. Now there right. is another surprise in this card. Teresa has made an easel card. So there's our beautiful front. On the inside, those corners that were cut off, well, Teresa has used them. She's colored them just like you just did and placed them on the corners. She's done a green strip. Same flower, same uh, technique on this, right. but because these are both raised on foam tape, she scored the front of her card, as you can see there, and that becomes an easel card. To stand that up. To stand it up. So, Very pretty. as we know, you're going to score the front of your card parallel to the fold, and you're only going to glue this part to the bottom, so just like that so that it is loose at the top. That way it can stand up to create your easel card. Very fun. One of the things I love about this card is that those pearls, they're putting in all in all of these strategic little ah. points. You see that? I think those are the la creme pearls. I think so. And they they're make a striking image that helps to break up that 
the tone on all tone of the brick. Uh huh. Yeah. So beautiful. And uh, Teresa, as always, take note of her ribbon treatment. She's mm -hmm. got um, this is a label. She has punched a hole, knotted, uh, put her ribbons through, and knotted them, and then spread the ribbon tails out to go on the back to of her. To wrap around right. the, the color me. And if you want your ribbon to go further, you don't have to go the entire length of the back right. of the card. Just tuck it under and glue right. it in place. And on this tag, she has just wrapped the ribbon at the end and just spread a little bit of a folded ribbon underneath her flower. So there are always these wonderful little techniques that Teresa does that are just that, so that, appreciated. Yeah, <laughs> it, it makes the card. They do. Yeah. So that is our Color Me card topper. And tomorrow we're going to finish up with some Christmas sweets. Oh, that sounds good. See you tomorrow.